I'm all glad you're here. And thanks for the rest of you being here. Uh, I've talked uh, here before and I see a few familiar faces, so I'm glad you're here. This morning, uh, we're going to talk about relevance, particularly about how to help the, the students in our seminary classes feel the relevance of the scriptures to their personal life. Sound good? So, how do we do this? How do we help them understand that, like, this is real for you, this is relevant to you? I think one of our best places to start, and this is going to sound cliche because we're religious teachers, but is with Jesus. <laughs> so if you're okay with it, let's start with Jesus here. So you, you're hey, familiar with this story. This? What, Ryan? Can you record this? It, it is recording to my computer. <laughs> Thanks. Yep. Um... So, <laughs> so let's start with Jesus, right? So one day, um, Jesus is, is sitting there and somebody approaches him with a question, trying to kind of mess with him a little bit. This is a common theme. And he basically, his question is, how do I go to heaven? Which is a question I think a lot of us have. And this is a guy who has studied before and Jesus sees that. And so he, he just asks him, he says, well, you've read the scriptures. How do you read it? And the guy gives a, a rather good answer from the, the book of the law, and he says, um, I think we need to love God with all of our hearts, might, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus is like, spot on, you got it, stuck it, well done, do this and you're on your path to heaven. And then the guy's like, but who's my neighbor? Now this is, seems like a perfect chance for relevancy, right? Like this is where you, you list off who would be the people that are their neighbors and different ways that we can serve their them and love them and things like that. Like that's how we would expect to share relevancy, right? However, Jesus approaches it a little bit differently. He says, once, once there was a guy traveling a, a distance and he gets attacked and beaten and all his stuff stolen and, and left for dead, basically. Now, my friend, um, he owns a roofing company up in Portland. And just this last week on Monday, he was held up at gunpoint outside of the Safeway. They, like, stole all his stuff. He's like, it was one of the scariest stuff, things that have ever happened. Like, he negotiated them to help him keep his passport and his like phone and then once the guys drove off with his car and all his stuff he used the phone to call the cops and the cops were able to track down most of the stuff but they even saw the guy driving down the road and the cops anyways it was chaos it's scarring but he didn't even get beaten and he was still like kind of traumatized by this this guy is just beaten to the point he can't move he's laying on the side of the road and while he's laying there hopeless in misery there's a priest that walks by. Maybe we say the equivalent of our stake president walks by, sees him, and avoids um, the situation. A little while later, a Levite, a temple worker, maybe they're already all dressed in their, their white clothes, walk by. And then a Samaritan comes, our equivalent to, I don't know what you would say, what we would think is just trash, right? Maybe he's got some cigarettes rolled up in his t-shirt and and some bad ink tattoos on his arm or something like that and he goes and this guy ministers to him ties up his wounds and puts him on his own cart takes him to the hotel pulls out cash and pays you know just working on a cash basis and it says when i come by again if you need to spend any more on this guy to take care of him then you let me know and then he turns back to the guy and he says, so who was his neighbor? And the, the lawyer asking the question was like, oh, the one that had mercy. He's like, yeah, stuck it again, well done. Go and do thou likewise. Okay, so let's talk about this a little bit. This seems a little bit counterintuitive here. Tell me about what you see and what Jesus does to, to help them see relevance. Tell me about what you see in the process. What are your thoughts? What are you thinking? Process this with me a little bit. Hmm. 
if I can raise my hand a little bit. Please. I, uh, to me, he's trying to take a situation that is an, a real life application to say, instead of me answering you who a good neighbor would be in a situation like this, what do you see as, uh, how do you view that? I think it's genius because it just carries a lot more power when you see some kind of real life situation that's happening. Like what about um, that kid that you saw everyone making fun of at school? You know, do we walk by or, I don't know, it just. Right. Uh, just I think you're seeing the applications problem. as you're thinking through it, right? Yeah, yeah. Any other thoughts on this? About how Jesus approaches this? Yeah, go for it. Chris? Children, um, kids are very literal. They haven't learned how to be um, intuitive or critical thinking skills haven't developed enough. And so um, when we're telling that story, um, I, I'm thinking it's fine to interject, you know, like um, the previous sister said, um, when you're talking about the story, then come in with think about that that kid that um, sits alone at lunch every day um he may not be physically beaten up but mentally he is because he's feeling very alone and um uh, whoever we're back with is our neighbor and when we hear that love thy neighbor as thyself um when we bring that into the what we're teaching them about this one thing um real important point because for years i always thought your next door neighbors you spend more time with them than you do <laughs> and um because i was very literal and to to understand that concept it's just like when we call bro everyone brother and sister they're not our brothers and sisters um in our core family but there are brothers and sisters on this planet uh, because we're uh, Jesus is our brother. You know, there's a lot of avenues we can bring in for reading the scriptures. We have to really teach these kids how to um, broaden their horizons. Of it's not literal. It's also I can't think of the word. What I'm metaphorical to say. there. You're dead. Karen, uh, you had your hand raised. Where, where were you? Karen, you wanted to share something? When, when we're discussing the scripture, especially a story like that or anything, I will stop and ask them, how is this relevant to you, a 14-year-old or a 15-year-old? Why is this important? And it gives them the opportunity then to ruminate you in their minds and think, well, how can I apply this application to my life? whether it's that kid that's being ignored in school or a little brother or whatever the case is but i'll ask him how is it important to you good that's a great question right there let, let me interject a couple of things right here number one have you ever had somebody a teacher a leader a parent uh, a sibling even tell you what you were supposed to do and after they told you how you were supposed to act you're like I'm gonna do the direct opposite just because you are annoying me right now. Am I the only one that is a stubborn punk like this? Um, here's one of the, the difficulties we run into when we're trying to teach relevancy for the scriptures is sometimes when we try and force it on somebody and when we, we, we just say, this is how you need to do it, we are gonna get a little bit of resistance there. But the way Jesus does it, instead of being like, stop being such a selfish punk lawyer and go help people who are in actual need, he softens it a little bit and he tells them a story and lets them uh, imagine a, a little bit for themselves. And we have a great capacity for, um, we have a great capacity for uh, narrative, like movies and and podcasts and novels and things like that were built in this way in some ways. 
And so I am not saying, do not mishear me. I am not saying there are not times that we, we, we brainstorm with them and come up with clear examples. Absolutely I am. But I am saying, consider as you study, integrating some of these stories like Jesus does in this way. Now, you might be thinking, I don't have any stories. I've never climbed Mount Everest. I've never done any of these amazing things. But the thing is, the more simple it is, the better. And just think about your real life and your real situation. And then we can ask them about their stories. And then we can get to, to some of those um, relevancies and applications, if that makes sense. So humor me and let's just try it out real quick. If you have your scriptures, I want you to go over to a book of scripture that we're, we're studying. And I want you to go, um, is it this week or last week? Um, let's go to Esther chapter 4. So Esther in the Old Testament. And you're familiar with this line. So Esther chapter 4. And I want you to read. Let's go to verse 13 and 14. You remember the context here, right? Um, the, the Jews are in trouble. Uh, Haman is, is making plans to execute them all. And so um, Mordecai, a Jew, is in mourning. Esther is kind of a secret agent Jew almost. Uh, she, she is not identified as a Jew up to this point. Uh, but she is in a position of power, right? So let's read verse 13 and 14. And I want you to look for some phrase that is meaningful or powerful to you when we go through these two verses. All right, uh, anybody willing to read those two verses for us? Esther 4, 13 and 14. Yeah, go for it, Kim, thank you. Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place but thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? As you guys look over those verses, are there any lines or phrases that you find powerful or any concepts or ideas in there that you're like, oh, that's good? Well, come true for times such as this. We think of uh, well, what time are we living in, especially the youth. Right. Perhaps you're here, what you do, is important. Okay, so you've almost done two steps already, Karen. So let's say this, let's say we read a book of scripture and we find something we're like, that's a money phrase, that is a good phrase, that is something amazing. So then ask ourselves, why am I touched by this? Why is the Holy Ghost um, making that pop to me a little bit? So let's uh, take a minute without answering real quick. I want you to take a minute and I want you to think about this. If that's a phrase that resonates with you, this idea that we're sent, thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this, if that's something that you resonate with, if that's an idea that, that you find powerful, why is that the case? Now, I, I'm not asking you to answer right now. I want you to think about it. Why do you find that concept powerful? And can you think of any experiences you or somebody else have had that you know of that illustrate this point that they are come for such a time as this. Think about it for a second. Why are you passionate about that? Why do you believe that that is true? And do you, can you think of any, any times, any stories that, that illustrate the truthfulness of that, that statement right there? Now, let me ask you, did anything come to mind? Could you please give the reference you're using again? Yes, ma'am. Esther 4, 13 and 14. And the phrase we're discussing is at the very end of verse 14. Thank you. Yeah. Shannon, 
Leah, Lindsay, and any of you three, and I don't care who answers here, did, you, did anything come to mind as you contemplated this for yourself? So it's not any relevance for me. Um, being a brand new teacher, you know, I can take this to a very, a very, you know, recent feeling I've had when I was called to be a seminary teacher. I'm like, what in the world? I'm not, <laughs> I, I'm not a scriptorian. I, and I was like, what in the world do I have to offer these kids that would help them progress in their, you know, their spiritual journey here? And, and so when I read this, that hit me going, okay, well, maybe I'm supposed to be here right now to teach them. And it was just, it's just so recent. It wasn't something that's long ago. I've had this moment several times throughout my life, right. but to have it happen so recently was that, to, that spoke to me, you know, and knowing that the Lord sent me here for right now. Okay. Are you guys watching what happens here when we study the scriptures and we find something powerful and we just simply ask, like, is there a story in your life right now? And we ask it for ourselves and maybe we share that story in, in class. It's simple, right? We're not talking about like, I, I don't know, we might have big experiences where we were like, I don't know, leaping in front of a bus and saving a toddler or something like that. Maybe that happens to you on the regular. But if it's real, like Lindsay is saying, if it's something that's immediate, if it's now, like the spirit just pops off that, that, that is wonderful. And so one of the ways we get that relevance is we feel it for ourselves and we think, why do I believe that? And we come up with those reasons. And then we simply tell that to the class and we ask them, why do you feel this? What evidence have you seen? When have you noticed this happening in your own life? Any other thoughts along these lines as we've studied this verse? Any other stories come to your mind uh, about the truthfulness of that statement? When you take that, this uh, scripture block, these, both these verses together, I think one of the points that Mordecai is also trying to make is that, okay, if you don't do anything, don't worry, the Lord will deliver us some other way. He has faith in that. He's, but you'll be destroyed. And so, uh, but right now you have an opportunity to be part of this and to be the help because this is such a time as this and you are where you are and all of these things you know are not a, a coincidence okay but i do believe in that faith that, that there will be the deliverance somewhere but so kim let me ask you because you're feeling passionate about this right like you felt the truth of this principle is there anything in your life that has made you feel like hey if this doesn't work out well god will provide another way like why do you believe that's true I believe that's true because my husband had cancer and got better. <laughs> but, but when it was really bad and we didn't know if he was going to get better, I had to do that fasting and praying to, to, um, to keep being a mom and, <laughs> and keep going on without knowing what was going to happen. Okay, now I want you guys to notice right here. What just happens when we, we talk about a statement we believe is true and then we take one more step and just say, why do you believe it? What have you noticed? When you shared your witness right there, the Holy Ghost comes in so clearly and bears truthfulness. And, and we don't necessarily have to go around to each individual student and say, now, what do you need to do next, right? D does that make sense? Like, we can allow it to be natural and authentic and say, well, why do you believe? And let them share those stories. And the more we get that collective um, sharing of their experience with truth and with God, the, the power will flow in. Like what you did just now is powerful. And uh, so I'm just inviting you to, to follow that same process as you do it. You do not need to be like, um, what was it Lindsay was saying, scriptorians here. You read it, you find something meaningful to you and ask yourself why, and then ask them why that is meaningful. And the relevance will flow out of it in the most natural way. You all know how to have real conversations with people. You all care about people. This is simply, teaching is simply a formalized way to have these real, beautiful, open conversations with people about who they are, about their lives, about their friends, and, and just let it flow naturally that way. And let the Holy Ghost begin to teach them and, and prompt them on their next steps. And, and um, 
maybe the, the, the final thing we, we do on that is just ask, so what? If this is true, if I believe this, so what today? And, and we ask ourselves this question, and we ask our students this question. If I believe this, this concept passionately, well, then what? And so, Kim, you shared most recently, and so I'm just going to ask you that, that question, okay? Um, and let's talk about the one you said, that God will provide a way in one way or another, and I believe this. If that is a true principle, therefore what in your life today? What do you, what do you conclude? What is your, I don't know, what's, what's your way I forward? What, I think what it's done for me is it's taken me from a really... Um, I would have used the word shy, but I think fearful <laughs> mm. was, was, was a good term for me um, growing up um, just with certain dynamics in, in my family and socially in school and everything like that. But um, the, as an adult, I don't, I don't worry about what someone's going to think or I don't worry about what might happen because I do have that, that faith that I'm doing my best and that there will be a way prepared for deliverance, whether it's from my, uh, whether my children will be delivered from my terrible parenting or. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, we're all there, man. We, we all pray for that. <laughs> That's what grace is for. But um, yeah, just in a very real way, it helps me just keep doing what otherwise I just would second guess myself to death about. Okay. This is, this is what we're talking about, brothers and sisters right here okay we have a real conversation about a real powerful concept that that's relevance right here when we help them see the relevance we find what the holy ghost makes pop for us as we have our own personal studies here we allow them to see what pops for them and we just think why does this pop for us why do i think this matters and we look for those personal experiences and we get them to share those personal experiences and then we ask, therefore what? So what? And as we do this, the relevance flows naturally as it does as a conversation. It flows naturally as, um, as just living life. And it becomes clear to them through the power of the Holy Ghost, the actions they need to take and the, the, the things they can do as they move throughout the day, just as it's become clear to you. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, any questions or any thoughts you want to, to share as we conclude today? You feel good about this? You feel like this is something you can practice on your own? Read, find what pops, ask yourself why, and then ask yourself so what? Is that doable? Any concerns? I love it. Okay. All right. I know that God is with you. I know that, that the Holy Ghost will help you feel promptings and will help you connect in real authentic ways with those that you teach. And I leave this with you in the name of Jesus Christ, amen.